During his lifetime, Sir Michael Tippett was considered one of the leading British composers. Throughout his life, he was a man keenly interested in politics with strong convictions and principles. When the Second World War started, Tippett, a pacifist, joined the Peace Pledge Union and applied for registration as a conscientious objector. Nevertheless, he was assigned to non-combative military duties, which he refused. And as a consequence, he was imprisoned, but released after just a month. Around this time, Tippett became interested more and more in writing a musical work of overt political protest. He found the subject of such a work simply by opening the daily news. On November 7, 1938, the 17-year-old Jewish refugee Herschel Grünspan entered the German embassy in Paris and shot a low-level diplomat, likely mistaking him for the ambassador. Of course, he was arrested at once, and the German retribution came swiftly. For several days, German military forces raided and destroyed Jewish homes, businesses, and synagogues throughout Germany. During this Kristallnacht, more than 90 people were killed and tens of thousands were arrested. The Kristallnacht has since been viewed as a prelude to the Nazis' final solution and the resulting Holocaust. Tippett now was determined to write a work that would not just memorialize the events of his day, but that would overtly denounce violence and oppression in general. And so, Herschel Grünspan became the child of our time. In writing his oratorio, Tippett took inspiration from one of the most famous oratorios of all, Handel's Messiah. Just like the Messiah, a child of our time, is divided into three parts. Part one sets the scene, the general state of affairs at the onset of the Second World War. Evil has taken a hold of the world, and the tenor soloist, who represents the Jewish boy, wonders how he can grow to be a man in a world like this. Part two is where the action happens, from the boy growing desperate, to him shooting the official, to the terrible vengeance that is taken. This is how the child of our time is born. He is the scapegoat whom all of the problems of the day are blamed upon. Part three then looks back at the events and reflects on a way forward. Tippett indicates that the only way forward is not vengeance and retribution, but finding compassion for our fellow humans and finding a way to embrace even the darkness that lies within us all. Inspired by Johann Sebastian Bach's Lutheran chorales, Tippett longed to incorporate such contemplative moments in his own work. But he also wanted to create a work that was universal, a work that would speak to atheists as much as to agnostics, to Christians as much as to Jews. He found this contemplative yet universal musical tool in the African-American spiritual, five of which he incorporated into his oratorio, dividing its structure and providing perspective and reflection on the action. Modern listeners are well aware of the association of these spirituals with the history of slavery in the United States. But for Tippett, these songs also offered a chance to express his universal message against oppression and against violence of any kind. He felt that these songs represented the voice of the oppressed everywhere, reminding us that injustice is not isolated to only one place or one time and a universal message he created indeed. Even decades later, we still deal with the same problems, albeit our protagonists have changed. Tippett himself acknowledged this in 1980, saying, when I wrote the work, I never considered its prophetic quality, but it seems that the growing violence springing out of divisions of nation, race, religion, status, color, or even just rich and poor, is possibly the deepest present thread to the social fabric of all human society. Still, over 40 years later, his words ring true, and his child of our time still feels as current and as relevant as it did 40 or 80 years ago.